I'm glad that uh, uh, see so many people from Canada participating in the project. Uh, Canada was one of the first places that we got organized and started moving outside the United States. And now it's become an international network of creative people. Uh, couldn't have done this without Quentin. Uh, uh, people from all over the world are paying attention to what you all are doing in Canada. Uh, that was commented upon last week uh, when I was in London at the Goldsmiths um, uh, conference that we had there on the Black speculative uh, uh, literary perspective. And this is growing into an international uh, phenomenon on both sides of the Atlantic, uh, North and South. And I'm just very uh, pleased uh, to see that uh, how things are coming along up in Canada in terms of uh, with the Black speculative tradition. And uh, Carnegie Hall has let me know that they are very pleased with the contributions from uh, the Canadian artists uh, north of the border. And so uh, as it loads, I want to introduce everyone to, to Anna, who uh, we connected uh, a couple years ago uh, in regards to the work that she was doing with uh, VR and, and XR. And she was really interested in, in getting involved with uh, BSAM Canada. Uh, BSAM Canada is still currently going strong. Uh, we are now managed, BSAM Canada is now being managed and steward by Astro Sankofa Arts Initiatives. And, uh, and so I'm excited that we can finally get to work with the amazing Anna, an Afro-Brazilian uh, creative who, who's multidisciplinary, multi multilingual, and uh, I think she is going to be a key asset for us uh, with with uh, some of the projects that we have going forth, uh, going forward, especially with her amazing um, okay. linguistic skills and artistic abilities. So I want to introduce you to Anna and hear from her. Anna, talk to us about this art. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thanks, thanks. Uh... Uh, so I'm happy to join today and to be part of this impressive project. Thank you. Thank you, Astro Sankofa. And uh, I'm excited to share with you the extraordinary artworks and powerful narratives that uh, are in the heart of this exhibition. So uh, let's explore, let's explore uh, the intersection of art, uh, ancestry, and uh, Black future. Uh, thank you. And I look forward uh, to our discussion <laughs> during this webinar. Mm -hmm. And so uh, for those who are new to Spatial I.O., um, it's it's very much like a game format. Uh, you can use, if you're using a headset, you can obviously use your device and they will, the uh, latency and how uh, it moves is very, is very much uh, in relation to your remote. If you're using your phone, you can do either AR mode where you can actually have the art, the, the gallery map to your room. And depending on how you move your phone, will will mimic how you move in the virtual space. Or you can just use it in the browser and and uh and essentially use your fingers to move around. Um you can use a keyboard to turn around and if you swipe on the screen. Whether you're using a mouse or on your phone, you can change your view and your and your vantage point. And um, and the amazing Anna made this introduction tutorial video so you can understand how to move around the space. And so essentially, you will see a magnifying glass. When you click on that, it will make the image bigger, and you can see the description of the work. But uh, also, it will allow you to not just see the description of the work. It will allow you allow you to also um, see the links that might be associated with the work and see the work a lot more bigger. And for those who may have not read the book or never heard of Mr. Uh, René Marin, uh, he was very influential in terms of early Black thought around um, thinking about decolonization, thinking about uh, allowing Black people to have a fantasy. And uh, Rene Maram was born in Martinique, and uh, he was very influential on the Negritude movement, 
also very influential actually on early Garvey, um, Garveyism and Garvey thoughts. And also uh, he won numerous uh, prizes for his work and his book became a top seller. And so this art piece, um, which one was which was one of the first art pieces that um, I wanted to include, um, is really looking at Ray Moran um, as a visionary, you know, and really speaking to the element of the story without giving away the story uh, too much. And then also like his books have been reprinted in many different languages, and so I, I had three of. Uh, the different books and they all represent different aspects of the of the story of the storyline but also it spoke to the mo moment in time where his books were were reprinted and republished his book also became really popular in germany during the weimar republic especially as uh you know women were really developing their voices and and really uh, expressing themselves as they saw fit you know a lot of the works that we that was chosen and a lot of works that were submitted really spoke to this idea of what does it mean to be the chief of your own life? What does it mean to be able to see things from a Black perspective? A couple more things I want to just point out to y'all in terms of cool things that you can do in spatial is uh, you can also uh, record um, and take videos of like, you know, different things happening. Um, so, you know, if you want to take a, an Instagram, Instagrammable moment or TikTok, TikTokable moment, you can also make your person dance and move. Uh, thanks for including me into this. Uh, I'm honored to be involved in this. this is an awesome project. Yeah, so this is Indigo Visionary. It's an anthology from uh, Planet of Vision Indigo. Visions of Planet Indigo, which is a collection of NFT art that I've done. It's available on uh, OpenSea. Uh, so this is just a, what I wanted to try to do is um, I wanted to tr look to make 3D items that are wall hangable in your spaces. So if you have a metaverse space, you can have this art and place it on your wall like you would in real life. So I was trying to go for uh, home deco art type of thing in a 3D space. So that's what this is here. Yeah. <clears throat> That's an uh, impressive artwork, and uh, I think there is uh, details that we could not lose. We should uh, lose the power of the tool that you are using here now, especially and make uh, this is the next step for the or the exhibition. Make it like uh, moving on the space, doing a turntable uh, animation to get it really uh, with all the power that we had in the that call artwork. I really, uh, I really love your work. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. That is, that is the mission. I'm getting my head around Unity so I can like, bring in actual animations into spaces like this, which is the beauty of this space. Um, I just like the fact that you can do all types of art. So you can do your images, you can do 3D, you can do fashion in this space if you're into digital twinning. There's just a lot of options. Hi, everybody. First of all, uh, thank you for having me be a part of this exhibit. Uh, this looks amazing. It's super cool. I haven't been part of anything virtual yet so you know this is this is cool um but uh my work is actually over to if i'm seeing right to the left here it's called project pot and it focuses on showing joy well black joy and black freedom within the ghettos and projects uh, when we think of or speak on ghettos and projects there is normally a negative connotation that comes with speaking on these uh, places, these spaces. And I just wanted to paint something that shows the positive side and shows the freedom and the joy that comes from these places and that is still there. So this is an acrylic on canvas. Um, it's, a, it's a triptych and it's just paying homage to showing black freedom and Black Joy and Unity. First of all, I want to say I'm so honored to be part of this project. Um, Quentin was one of my mentors uh, a couple of years ago. Um, and everything uh, Asha Sankalpa has been doing since then has blown me away. So such an honor to be here. Um, I think that's my piece right there on the right. Mm -hmm. um, so this one's called Star Seeds. Um, 
this one is all about um black joy black freedom and especially our inner children like the i work a lot with children uh, in the creative space and just seeing their their freedom their their complete um like how in tune they are with their with their own worth um with what they're here to do um i i depicted roots like they're they're touching the earth um which also has stars in it i don't know if you can see um but basically, I want to talk about the idea that we're all inherently magical beings. We're all inherently powerful, um, connected to something greater, the earth, um, the heavens, all of it. Um, and yeah, something about the inner children really feels healing to me and to our community. So I really wanted to bring that Black children and their joy and their creativity and their power. I wanted to bring that forward. It's beautiful and it. it it really does instill that sense of joy. I love how how tonal it is and that mm. like strong bit of realism, but then it's like playful and it's almost like ethereal. Yeah, it's mm. great. So um hello everybody. Uh just want to say thank you so much, uh Carnegie Hall and Afro Sankufa doing absolutely phenomenal work. And I'm excited to keep working. I'm excited for our next project. Quentin, I appreciate you so much. Um, so yes, my piece here, it's, uh, it's an oil painting from, um, my Hebrew nuance series. Uh, it's called Moses and the Handmaid. And essentially this, this piece depicts the moment when, uh, Pharaoh's daughter, I mean, yeah, the Pharaoh's daughter's handmaid came down and actually, uh, picked up Moses out of the reeds. And then, uh, she was actually issued to sort of wean Moses and raise him a little bit before she brought uh, Moses back to the Pharaoh's daughter. And so uh, part of the goal of this work is to historically represent Blackness and Bantu people, Cushetic and Bantu people into the biblical Canaan and create imagery for all of the Christian people or people who believe in the Bible or understand it that way, but to just have some form of uh, imagery based on the scriptures that uh, shows blackness so that we can, we can see ourselves because, you know, it's a bit controversial, but I think a lot of people understand that the Bantus and the Hebrews were definitely of dark, dark persuasion. So uh, this work is really meant to instill that and provide that um, in, in an uh, almost like 18th century way, how we see, uh, the old masters depict all the all the biblical imagery that we've seen that we know. Um, so so this work is meant to sort of do the same thing, but reframe it um, for the black lens, for the black soul to sort of take in and appreciate. So this is this is what I'm doing in this work. My uh, my piece is, and uh, I have two pieces. I'll start with. Uh false memory uh, so the black and white one uh it was done digitally uh, and there's a bit more to this piece um, it starts it was actually made to be a video um and i started it after reading a choice of weapons by gordon parks and i was really moved by his story and how he was uh challenged in his youth to make some hard choices and his options weren't the best and I could really relate to that and I decided to create some art that kind of told an untold story or maybe a story that couldn't have been told and I brought together all of my favorite um, historical figures in the black, black community so Muhammad Ali, uh, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, uh, James Baldwin, and Maya Angelou. And I wanted to make a moment in time that never existed, because sadly, none of all these people never got to be in the same room at the same time, but they all affected us in different ways throughout history. And I wanted to make a like a false memory where we could have a, an image where all these heroes were together in one place. And I decided to make it a train station to uh, symbolize uh, movement and progress and uh moving forward 
And in the back, if you can zoom into it, um, I uh, added some graffiti and it says uh, grace, love and integrity. And I feel like those should be like the pillars of our um, values and morals as a community. And I feel like those are all the things that these uh, five people really uh, enveloped. Uh, yeah. And for the second piece, uh, it's just the painting of Chadwick Boseman. Um, he was one of my favorite actors and performers. And I was destroyed when uh, I found out that he had passed. Um, and I wanted to just like celebrate his courage uh, for dealing with cancer. Um, on his own, and I know a lot of us, we, we tend to deal with things on our own, and um, I really just wanted to celebrate his strength, and um, just like how important his last performance was to me. Uh, this is, uh, the reference was from his last performance in um, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, and there was a part in that movie where he was performing and he was kind of just being a bright light. And I wanted to bring that out in the artwork and um, immortalize him in that way. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Beautiful work, brother. It's really, really beautiful. Thanks, Andre. Wow. Yeah, Gordon, this this Gordon one in particular is like super painterly. I, I love it, man. That's um it's amazing. Wow. Yeah. Thanks, Philip. I like this one. Uh Dr. Rod, you want to touch on this one real quick? About that era in in the States, yeah, when Ma Rainey took place and how it might connect to the Weimar Republic. During the Weimar Republic period, this is when uh the um Alain Locke, who's considered like the uh, like the the philosophical uh, leader of the Harlem Renaissance, um, really becomes the key figure that kind of is the generation that begins to come after W. E. B. Du Bois, who was a considered a great thinker and founder of the um, co-founder of the NAACP and a lot of other work. And Alain Locke uh, frequently uh, traveled to Berlin. Um, getting some insight about um, the relationship between art and politics and cosmopolitanism and music. And as I remember talking to you in an earlier conversation, Locke kind of clashed a little bit with Rene Marin um, ideologically over um, some aspects about the significance of the Weimar Republic in relation to Black culture. And it was during this time period where uh, you can go back and pull up some of the newspaper clippings. It was when um, uh, in the early to mid twenties, when the uh, German people uh, first heard jazz and there and there, uh, and as Ken Burns put in a documentary, uh, when they first heard that sound, the sound of jazz, they talked, they talked about jazz giving them a reason to live again because so many people had died during World War I. And uh, there were, they, there was a, there were uh, black bands touring all around Europe in the 1920s. And the European scholars were pondering what all of this meant because during the same time period, for uh, white Americans, they were called the lost generation in terms of, because uh, the Europeans were very depressed saying that if we have, uh, you know, because they had been guiding themselves by ideas related to the European enlightenment. And so, uh, and they prided themselves on logic and ideas from the enlightenment, but uh, you're obviously not very enlightened if you uh, have a war where you kill tens of millions of people. And this was kind of the beginning of the end of the dominance of European culture in the world when uh, people like Oswald Spengler wrote a book, The Decline of the West, at that time. And, and it was the seeds sown during the 1920s 
And it's pr predominantly the reason, at least in the United States, why Black Americans have dominated American popular culture for the last hundred years, uh, going back to this uh, time period uh, when uh, Americans and a lot of people in the West began losing belief in their own culture, but it is really the beginning of the cultural rise of everyone else uh, over the last four generations or the last hundred years that has continued to build for the last century. And uh, and jazz was just one of those art forms. And it's come to light recently that a lot of the jazz band, and I guess it'll come out when we participate with Carnegie next year in the uh, Latin music festival, that a lot of uh, participants, and it's now finally they kind of uh, coming into it, that participated with the black jazz tradition that went to Europe, a lot, uh, quite a few of them out of Harlem were uh, Black Puerto Ricans that participated also uh, when the Black jazz tradition um, went into Europe. And of course, this is during the same time of uh, the rise of the Garvey movement when Marcus Garvey, who was uh, wanted to come to the United States and meet uh, Booker T. Washington in terms of how to engage in development. And so this is a time period where the first, you have the first large gathering of Black Americans, people from the Caribbean, and people from Africa all kind of um, converging around uh, Harlem, New York, uh, in the night in the teens and late nineteen twenties. That's that's amazing. Thank you for that uh, historical uh, information. Yes, definitely want to echo that. Thank you for the insight um, because it's actually kind of a good segue um, because I'm very interested in the Afrofuturist space. Um, and so my piece here um, is part of an ongoing series slash uh, dialogue called Simulation Theories. And I think um, what I'm interested in exploring is sort of the, the intersection of our imagination and our physical realities and what that space looks like and how we can use actually that space to our own advantage for things like you know manifestation creating um and also just exploration um i think i'm very uh, fascinated by this space and um i think afrofuturism specifically um kind of opens up that world for that broader discussion um and so yeah like simulation theories is like not only something that I explore through my artistic practice, but I think through my um, my personal living, like my personal life. Um, and uh, yeah, I want I want to make this ultimately a series that can create a broader dialogue for uh, you know speculative futures, for um, conversations amongst Black creatives to kind of create a world that feels better for all of us ultimately. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I really have to say about that. I'm glad to see that you're working on that, uh, Tony, because now uh, one of the things I can see, I uh, presented in Brazil. Uh, that's why I was glad to see Anna earlier. I said, man, the Brazilians are really getting, are coming on strong with um, their work in this field. Thought, oh man, the black folks are doing, what do you, what's the word you all use? Tings up in Canada. And so uh, we said, we're gonna get up there to see, the, check on the tings uh, up in Toronto and Montreal. Hi everyone, my name is Jasmine. Um, this piece is entitled Black Fairy. It was a collection I did um, and is really diving into um, digital generative AI. I am a digital artist um, and I focus on depictions of indigenous and black bodies in unconventional spaces and identities. Uh, my first collection was really focusing on the Black identities in space and in technology, um, kind of like Terminator meets Black people. Um, and this collection was the second part of that, of um, identifying Black bodies in mystical folk folklore, sorry, um, which goes back to a lot of um, African story and folk telling anyways. Um, and it was kind of inspired by actually another exhibit that focused on European fairies and the their folklore going all the way back to um, in the BC era. 
So um, I decided to dive into what would Blackberries look like? How would they be? How would they exist? And um, uh, this piece really embodies uh, that. <laughs> uh, really a depiction of uh, Black bodies and spaces that um, maybe people may wonder, like, what would it be like if you're in these spaces? Or has anyone come up with it? Or has anyone taken a story and put it into um, actual arts? So this was kind of that translation here. So I'm super excited to be here and a part of the exhibit. All right, so we're going to close it off with the youngest person in this exhibition, uh, young lady who I, uh, who I'm going to consider to be my new mentee, because uh, she has caught my attention with the work that she's doing, and her work is over here. Oh, it's right there on the on the right. Yep, right go. there. Boom. All right, just J Art Guantru. <laughs> yeah, so my name is Jamira, also known by just Jay Art as my artist name. Um, this piece is, it was made with oil pastel back in 2020. And it was really just inspired by a quote by Marcus Garvey, which basically summarizes that a person without knowledge of their past history is like a tree without roots. And I was just playing with that quote. This is the imagery that I got and painted. And it's just an expression of that quote to immerse yourself in your roots, not only learn about it on a serious matter, but to play in it and share it, share it and let it be a resource to others, much like a tree, you know, a tree is great for nature, but it also helps other people, you know, we have trees for oxygen, for resources, and we ourselves can be the trees of the world. And that's kind of just the message <laughs> that I want to spread with this piece. Um, to, you know, the roots are kind of like the stability of the tree and we ourselves, like our souls and who we are should be the stability of who, of who we are as people in the world. So it's kind of the message um, for the piece and I thought it was very fitting for this exhibition. And I want to thank you, Quentin, for reaching out to me to be a part of it. Um, it's also my first virtual exhibition. <laughs> so I hope it's one of many more to come. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Uh, thank you. I mean, I definitely feel like this is uh, one of my favorite pieces in this, um, mainly because, uh, you know, uh, as folks know, I'm a Garveyite and honorable uh, UNIA member, but also it, it really connects to the Batawala um, message, right, of connecting to your roots and main maintaining your roots, right, which is what uh, Rene Moran was really trying to get to in terms of the fantasy element of his book and in terms of uh, the story that he was telling. So, um, and especially when we think about what does it look like when we can be the chiefs of our lives, right? When we can be the Batuwalas of our lives, right? And and be able to um, engage in uh, our Blackness, our Africanness, um, and the limitlessness of that. So um, I love this idea, obviously, with the dreads and tingles. So, of course. <laughs> wow. Roots all the way around. Just to say, it was amazing. Thank you so much. Love for all <laughs> you all, and have a, a great day. Hope to see you again. Soon. Bye. Thank you, and thank you for all the hard work that you did, Anna. You did an amazing job. Thank you. Uh, bless, bless up everyone. Have a beautiful day. Continue to invest in your imagination, as that is what the future is made of. Check out Astro Sankofa. Tell someone about Astro Sankofa and continue to live Astro Sankofa without limits. Thank you.